Well, hello to all. Uh, welcome uh, in the discussion uh, about community engagement. It is part of the project bridging uh, communities that we implement with the support of the Visegrad Fund. The project started back then last year. And the main aim of this project is bring together countries from the Visegrad. It means like from Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia and Hungary. And in this uh, project, we had also partners from Western Balkan, from Serbia, North Macedonia, Albania, Kosovo. And uh, the main aim of this project was to a little bit kind of like move the communities and see what is happening. I will now share just the screen that also like after uh, maybe you were not involved in all the activities. So just a little bit to make also a quick recap what everything was done. Yeah, we kick it the project and then this, and after. If you remember or for some online meeting, you can check now how you look now and how you look then. After <coughs> we had like this training about the human library methodology, because the main aim of this project was organize human libraries, which are interactive events, giving opportunity people from community to come and to speak with interesting guests. So firstly, we train each other. And after we enroll the human libraries, the first one was in Vranje, Serbia, thanks to the organization of Gordana Ristic, which represented Generator Serbia. And it was all focused on ecology. And that will be also the topic, I guess, of the discussion today, because I know that Gordana and also Vladan, that they are really eager about the issue. So we will more speak about that. After we had a, a human library in Skopje, that was organized by organization Asaka Skopje. We have here Slavica Taseva, which represents this organization. And her human library included this, uh, 10 very diverse books. For example, these two guys are representing community garden in Skopje, which are trying to unite people on the topic of gardening and create like community ar ar around it. But they also had uh, like books which represented very inspiring stories for different social causes. For example, this guy, he, when COVID started, uh, he was like in IT computer business. And what he did is that he started to repair old computers that he can give them back to children because there was really lack of it. And now he has around like this huge, like kind of, I would say, community, which is really helping and make the difference so people, uh, young people can access to education. So the human library in Skopje was very diverse and uh, included very much expiring stories. So after we were like uh, still moving and we have the great pleasure that the Polish partner for, uh, Fondancia Incubo Innovacy connected with Folkowisko Festival. And we have here a representative from board like from the festival, like from the organization, that's like Daria and Lukasz. So thank you very much for joining. And uh, the third human library happened during the festival. And uh, just let me tell you that it's not small festival. It is really a huge thing. So it was really all like pleasure that the Polish team managed. So that was the third human library. Also, they had a diverse like books which share their like uh, stories. After we had a human library in Hungary, we have here Janet from the organization which uh, hosted this uh, human library. Also very diverse like human library with different stories and different uh, books. And uh, in the next step came human library in the Czech Republic. Lada from the Czech organization Mission Reconnect was directly involved in uh, organizing it. And we also went through, uh, by the way, that we included different books. For example, here, this woman opened the first, like, let's say, ecological shop in uh, Psero when you try to really don't use any packaging. But we also had a uh, this uh, person, like it is a man, which opened like the first, I would say, democratic school in our small city. So it's, it, we try to really include people which are in some way very active in our community and try to do like something. And after Czech Republic, we went to back to the Balkans and there was a human library in Albania, 
and from Albania here we have a Mercida. And also they uh, included very different like uh, books. So that was like a little bit like sum up of the human libraries which happened. I just want to add that uh, on the end of this month, there will be also human library in Kosovo, in Mitrovica. And we will see when we will close it by human library in Slovakia. It makes you, you personally, like uh, what happened that you are engaged in the communities or you organize the festival like Daria or you fight with Vladan and like Gordana for ecological issues or you try to change uh, situation in Macedonian schools or how young people see or Janet, you also try to make a difference in Hungary. You asked me, because my first time here, you asked me about uh, how I stay activist. Yeah, yeah, uh, how you became my, activist. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was a year and a half ago. Uh -huh. uh, I go to protest against uh, one small hydro uh, on one small river here. Um, that river uh, crossed to our city and pollute everything. And I, uh, I uh, there um, uh, found um, um, Branko Mitov, our co-founder of uh, Eco Christ uh, Association. I think we are not uh, <clears throat> um, some association. We are a small group who fighting against that mines and uh, small hydros, and uh, we found ourselves and uh, trying to fight against that evil in our um, municipality. Uh, we are very unique. Uh, case in Serbia because so this of Serbia is planning to be all under mines. You know, uh, that uh, there is not just an uh, environment problem, but also human rights, I will say, because uh, uh, our local president, who is the, how the, the, uh, the main problem uh, on, of our municipality, he ruling 22 years already, and people are scared to go out and uh, protest against him, of course. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, people want to live here, to stay here. They have their property, gardens, that stuff. Uh, we are the most poor municipality in Serbia. People live here with uh, 200 euros, believe me or not, per month. So, but uh, his politic is to, people disappear here, you know, because uh, they're planning six or maybe seven mines in our municipality and one of their their mines is uh, is phosphate and, and uh, uranium <laughs> and uh, you know where very if you want to open some that kind of mine somewhere you don't need people <laughs> you know and uh, we fighting we have uh, this Friday and a new uh, protest against the that uh, but uh, you know people is scared I say already to go out and fight again against that Mm -hmm. Evil. I uh, we trying everything. Uh, our co-founder uh, Branko Mitov uh, uh, reports to institutions, to inspections, uh, everything. But uh, you know, in South East Serbia, the corruption is very, very strong. So we, I know, we almost uh, gone with ideas what to do. You know, we trying peacefully to fight for our environment, for our rivers, for uh, mountains, but. Uh, no, nothing, nobody is care for us on South East Serbia, and that's the huge problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, thank you for <laughs> such an introduction. You took it like with, like, you know, all like uh, your like your motivation, and also how you say sometimes we don't know what really what to do because when we you use yeah. all this peaceful way, like, I, I yeah. believe that it's very hard. Maybe I will now pass to Gordana because she's coming from the same country. Gordana, you would like to add something because you are coming from South Serbia. Your yes. human library was about ecological issues. So you brought yes. together 10 people which share the passion like Vladan and you. Yes, and one of them was uh, exactly the person that Vladan was mentioning, Bra Branko Mitov. But since Branko Mitov doesn't speak English, I invited Vladan to join us and to, to present some of the problems of some really very far away corners of Serbia, uh, who are really, really in danger much more than other parts uh, where more people live in Serbia. So he explained that. And what I did, I, I, I managed to gather people uh, from all over Serbia at our human library to present most of the problems in Serbia in 2022. So we shooted a video, uh, a film, let's, uh, it's more like a documentary 
that we still need to finish uh, editing because we are waiting for some authorizations. But anyways, I'm already visiting uh, schools and we had one public projection and I will still uh, visit several schools uh, by the end of the project. Uh, showing showing to the kids about the problems we have in Serbia and they just, there are no channels to reach young people, for instance, mm. uh, uh, and to, like with the information about the problems, although they have, they have, um, uh, how do you say, subjects at school like uh, sustainable development or ecology or different kinds of this kind of, or like civic education, where there is a space for uh, information to, to reach them, but it somehow doesn't reach them. So uh, this is what I'm going to try to like try to do, like to to overcome this gap and to to present these problems to young people. Mm -hmm. Of all of it, why we, for example, did this project when we did this human library, is really to find people like Vlada, you, Jeanne, yes. Daria. I will come to all of you, no worries. And really see like how to bring to this energy to more people. If we fight like for ecological issue or let's see for also the other organization, what is now the biggest issue for them. So I really appreciate that Vadan has such a power. And you already mentioned so many things that Vadan and his community is fighting and they are running out of idea what to really do. And Gordana, how you say now, like we try too many times rich young people and we also have not really proper channels. So maybe our channels are, I don't know, update, outdated. Because we struggle the same in Czech Republic, like how to reach or like when we work with the youngsters. Now it seems that maybe the only way is TikTok videos or maybe not. I really have no idea. So thank you both of you for this moment. I will now pass it to Janet. Janet, the starting question was like, what makes you, you engage? But you can also refer, for example, to this issue with youngsters because you do work with young people. I know that your organization engages, for example, with Erasmus Plus program. So do you have the same struggle, for example, how to reach them or when you think about like your way, how to work, feel free to approach it. All right. So we, we work and I personally work with training and, and research. And I started to get engaged when I was in the end of elementary school or early high school or something. So that was many, many years ago. Uh, again, sorry for my voice. And uh, my way of approaching people is to be a person to introduce myself, not only the organization I'm representing, I'm representing here at Eurotender, uh, but I also have my own foundation that I, I, through which I work with young people and people working with young people, so professionals too. And my, my way of doing that is to be a person, not be the representative of an organization. So when they, they need help, they want to connect, they connect with me. Um, which is like a more personal connection. And I, I seem that this, this works for me. Um, and in my opinion, in order to reach out to a community, you need to care for someone in their community. I mean, and also that's how they get more engaged because they want to do good for their own, their own community. And in that way, they, they connect. So it, it comes down from, in my opinion, it comes down uh, to them caring about somebody in their own community. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I think the human library is where maybe it is a good way how to approach people in the communities, if you do agree, because you take someone from the community and you give people the chance to talk with them. Exactly, exactly. And um, well, if you are talking about the human library, we wanted to, we, at first we struggled to select 10 people and then we had even more. So we had 11 books in the end. It was like, people were so interested. That's very nice to hear. Thank you, Jeanette. Now I will go to Daria because Daria is the person behind this Folkovisco festival. And uh, you really do engage people on, uh, let's say you try to do it every year. So from where is uh, your motivation in coming? Because I really believe that organize such an event, it's very exhausting. You need to do a lot of things, maybe also the one which you love, but maybe the one which you love less, but also how the community is reacting, because I know that your festival is not happening close to any big cities. It's, ba it's basically a little bit out of it. You go, I would say, to the rural areas out of the big cities. So how people react there? Um, I guess Folkovisko festival proves that um, there is no way to... Um, 
you don't need to uh, do the same hobbies. You don't have to do the same interesting thing. It's just about uh, your motivation to know each other. Uh, we have, for example, some, um, I don't know, in a human library, we have someone who loves meat and we have vegetarian girl who was very motivated to, to, to tell everyone that meat is not very a good way to, to, for your diet. And uh, at the end, they were like close friends. <laughs> so uh, like uh, these days, they are close friends, really. It's, it's amazing. Um, and I guess this festival really proves that you don't need to uh, have the same hobbies to, to know each other and uh, be um, like close, I guess. Mm -hmm. And what makes you, to you personally, organize such a festival? What gives you the energy? Why you are doing it? Um, because of the people. Like when I see someone who is, um, I don't know, it's, it, seems, it seems that sh he or she is, I don't know, maybe the fan of the rock music and and he's coming to folk festival and he's dancing um traditional folk dance uh with the you know with the um, black suits or something like this um it's it's um, proves me that um, that everyone can do uh, great fun each other no matter what something mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I think that this connection with people is very essential and also for personality that's my motivation because I do like this connection. So I didn't mind what well that you were jumping in. I really like that there is somebody energetic. And now we still have here Mercida and Slavica for the first round. And Slavica, she has like long career, lots of years of experience. But Slovica, what makes you to go back to youngsters? Like why you are like doing activities which touch at young people? Of course, like also any kind of comment about human library in Skopje, which was very diverse, is uh, also welcome. Welcome, Slovica. Uh, hello. Uh, what it's my uh, what it drives me? Let's say it's uh, that way. I'm coming from a professional organization of career counselors, and I have this belief that every one of us has some special talent. And uh, uh, if uh, you want something, you can accomplish. But uh, youngsters uh, or uh, young people are uh, they. Mm. They find themselves having problems with self-confidence and believing that something is possible for them, especially coming from uh, Balkans. And uh, this is the way when I'm engaging the community is the way to show them that uh, everything is possible. Uh, was uh, was um, uh, to show the the community that even that you have different difference, even that you have uh, different uh, hobbies, even even that you have uh, different. Uh, physical uh, limitations you can you can uh, you can do something uh, and be more that uh, you 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 even uh, thought that this is possible so uh, even uh, we have a, a, a library a, a human life book on human library uh, that was on video games and to show them that even video games can be uh, a profession and uh, we have a uh, very powerful uh, ladies who show that uh, even that if you are female, you can make a, a change in the society. Uh, first, you are making change in your life and the people surrounding, and then your 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 your, your impact is bigger. But for all of this, you have to be visible. Uh, we are uh, as association, we are all doing uh, this. Uh, uh, how to say it? Um, events and uh, we are uh, guest le lecture to, to different university, to different uh, uh, workshop, to different um, uh, other community engagement events, just to promote that uh, if you uh, believe in yourself and uh, you, 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 you find a, di uh, 
uh, you're open and you find uh, uh, a needed support, uh, everything can can be uh, can be done. And we are here for that to be the the support to to someone's dream. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That's also very nice what are you saying. You all say like so very cool things. Now I will go to Mercida. Mercida is coming from Albania. She is part of organization Youth for Social Changes, which hosted a human library in Tirana. And uh, before we went official with all of you, we would just chat with Mercida that I was today reading article on Guardian that basically from Albania, many young people want to leave. Not just like youngsters, but generally there is the tendency of leaving Albania because they don't see the pers like perspective and high corruption. So Mercida, I Maybe have we questions. should start with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have these two questions about it. Why you are active? Because you are active. You are also involved in different initiatives. And you are still in Albania. So what, let's say, for this moment makes you stay? Compare with, like, all these tendencies that everyone want to leave. Okay. Uh, first of all, I have been active since 18. I had the chance to be active in my community. We had a small board of young young people that uh, try to advocate about the problems of young people or even other problems of all the community. And I start from that moment and uh, taking part of many trainings and many projects that make me go from in this, in this uh, direction. Uh, about uh, leaving Albania, it's a very serious problem, to be honest, even if uh, the politics say that it's not that big, but uh, we see every day families going, not just young people from, from our country. Maybe it's, it's because of uh, not just corruption, but even the small payments about to live here, even prices are going higher every day for basic things. Um, I am still here, but I, I, I can't say that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think to go, <laughs> but I'm still here because uh, uh, I'm working here for just six months now uh, in the organization, but uh, it's very nice to meet the uh, people from many countries that uh, work and are motivated to do great things, mm -hmm. such even the human library, of course, it was very, very nice. Uh, we are not expecting to see as much people as we had in human library, and I was really surprised on it. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need to be very honest, I can add that your number went over 100 and you really do almost like having like 150 people, so it was like really nice turnout. Yeah, yeah, something like that, yes. Thank you, Mercida, for let's say this all coming round. And where you are like finding your energy to be still active or like activate the others. Yeah, well, I'm coming from the very south of Serbia, which is really not very active. It's well known as a passive uh, environment and people are more, you know, quiet. So this is my main motivation, like to somehow make the problems of, of like a Serbian real problems, make them closer because they are not well informed because let's say we have censored media in Serbia, like public media are censored by, by the governing uh, structures. So this is my main motivation, how to inform people and how to like show them the real problems in Serbia that are happening due to, I don't know, neoliberalism, capitalism, like foreign companies are coming and destroying our environment, our clean environment. And we somehow cannot protect it or we have to be more active in order to protect it. So this is my main motivation and I'm like thinking and trying to figure out what would be the best channels to inform. And that's why I had, I started to work with, uh, with, uh, in this, in this field, but especially in the South, there are some, there, some people are showing up like Vladan and his, uh, his non-formal group or Branko Mito in Bosilegre, but also other other individuals in other small municipalities so what they need they need like a logistical support you know like how to connect them to institutions or if they are doing that how to connect them to media which i did 
with one with one group of uh, activists and then suddenly this problem sh was shown in even even national media and that was good what is nowadays uh, like a very uh, hot issue in serbia it's air pollution and the very first guy who started online uh, online campaigning four years ago and you know it grew and it grew so he really first uh, virtually tried to raise raise our awareness of this problem because we are really in the top countries of polluted air and we have like between 10 and 15 thousand people dying per year because of air pollution so nowadays also local medias are are, are <clears throat> talking about that nowadays you can just walk around the town small towns and hear people talking can you smell this you know it's it's really not good air so for instance in this case we came to that uh, to that uh, level so now we need to push more so people start going out and protesting and the, the very next protest will happen this next sunday on the on the 13th in belgrade people will gather in front of the president uh, president house let's say and protest so mm -hmm. yeah people mm -hmm are really uh, worried about uh, about the environment and uh, and uh, pollution in Serbia and it's moving forward really mm -hmm. so i'm trying to push from my side and in in south serbia where it's really not very <clears throat> popular topic but it is it is starting to become which is good i think mm -hmm. no i think that like rising awareness is very important and make people ask questions and make people talk about the issues yeah. And Vladan, because like uh, you are from, let's say this, let's say activist, you are not so institutionalized in some organization. How you yeah. react when somebody asks you, but why you do that? Because that's also sometimes what uh, we experience. Yeah. You know, you go yeah. and for example, even in my small Czech city, just to tell you, it's like a 50,000 people, but it's like city, which is also a lot of uh, economical issues, social issues when we compare with Czech Republic and people say, but why to care? You know, yeah. so why you answer or how you would motivate person would say, but why? Like why I should go yeah. to protest on a Saturday or why I should like do stuff like Slavica, Daria, like that we are yeah. engaged? Uh, you know, <clears throat> my motivation is because I'm always support justice. I know in any kind of you. And uh, I love, love, love climbing. We have many mountains around in a municipality. You know, the for me, it's the biggest sadness when I climbing, I see that nature, forest, uh, beautiful rivers, clean water. And when I think that will disappear in a couple next years, that for me is the biggest, I don't know how to say, I'm disappointed uh, what they do to that municipal because Serbia have uh, that West uh, Serbia with the mountains tourism and that kind. But but we also have uh, how to say potential to be uh, to develop that kind of tourism here. And uh, why they must to do that uh, to open that mines and destroy that very beautiful environment? If if we talk about what we are very very. Uh, Reach with that clean water in that mountains in that village, but the day is starting to destroy us. It don't want to open here factories for that waters. You we know that uh, water will be new oil in maybe next decades. We will fight for water, and uh, doesn't matter how much people live here. We are uh, just municipality with uh, maybe three, four thousand people, not more right now. But uh, that's for me. It's just doesn't matter if no one lives here. It will be disaster to destroy this uh, environment around you know um, and uh, <clears throat> you know the corruption is big we're trying everything uh, to fight against that um, we, uh, tomorrow i go in a court against one uh, how to say uh, uh, the old junk from uh, a town it's uh, really near to us maybe two kilometers that is not by the law and we're trying to fight to close that, uh, that uh, to breathe uh, fresh air. You know, uh, our uh, municipality is, uh, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, we are found in the mountain almost. And it's uh, the disaster to breathe uh, polluted air here. <laughs> how, I don't know, how is that? 
and uh, I, I uh, will be back about motivation. I motivation and always support everything for justice. It doesn't matter uh, which, uh, which, uh, let's say, uh, sorry, my grammar is not perfect. I support everything. I like to stay here on the mountain uh, and uh, to, uh, I live from my gardens, you know, uh, but if they pollute everything, uh, I don't know, I can't stay here. Uh, here, people dying by the cancer mostly, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and uh, I don't know, the politics here is very bad and evil against us. And uh, you can do nothing to change that. That's for me is the biggest problem here. You know, people are scared uh, in, uh, from people behind the curtain, you know. Uh, uh, we are the few people who have courage to step up and go out and protest. Uh, but you know, uh, we starting, I don't know, I, I, I always lost hope to find a way uh, to to fight against this situation, but that uh, don't disappoint in the way of motiva motivation. I always, I, I'm always motivated. I say already in a Friday we have a new protest against small hydros and uh, that mines. I have friends from one village. Uh, they're resident of village where is one huge mine, and uh, that house is dig uh, hole house is uh, just 50 meters far away from that houses where people live. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they pollute their water. They they now don't have uh, to drink water, clean water to survive there. And uh, and when I see those faces of those those people who want to live here, to stay here, to fight for their freedom and survive there, uh, I know I'm ready to almost sac sacrifice myself for those people. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's for me easy to find motivation. Mm -hmm. When I, I it, justice is blind, but doesn't matter. I will support. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for such a talk and sharing. And I really hope that, like, one day, like, it, it will like people will join you. Thank you very much. I Thank will you. now go to Slavica, Janet and Mercida. And why? Because you do cooperate already with different countries through different projects, not just with Visegrad. And you participate. I can count, for example, Slavica was in my Czech city. So when I say my Czech city, Slavica could really imagine that it's not just like how to say pink and that we have also a, little, a lot of problems. Mercida was, for example, in Poland. Like we spent with Mercida some time in Poland. So Mercida also have maybe a bit understanding how Poland looks like. Janet is also very active. So I sometimes have this question and maybe you will give me a better idea how to answer people when they say, but why you do this? Like, why this cooperation is needed? Like, so um, I'm facilitating, I'm training these um, different uh, international projects, also locally, but also also an international yeah. one, as you mentioned. So why I do it is that I do it for for also for myself because I gain something every time. I learn something every time not just about the topic that i'm i'm dealing with but also about myself and other people and how these connections work so mm -hmm. for me that's the one of the main motivations and also also another thing is to see this this uh, aha moment in people's eyes when i when i have my participants and then they they connect why are we doing this certain activity so they would they would do this aha uh -huh, that that is it for me mm -hmm. thank you slavica like when we speak about all these like projects and even between the countries, because you, for example, grew, uh, bring in August group of people, even young people. We had like 16, 17 years old in my Czech city. We had there like teachers. Why it? Why do you think like uh, it, this is also maybe good experience or how you see it? Uh Share uh, it's it's a great experience be uh, because uh, we came there to learn on digital tools and to exchange different experiences and practices that are used in uh, Czech Republic and in North Macedonia. And uh, beside that, we we meet uh, a new people and uh, we uh, get to know another country's culture. So all the process is learning. Some of the participants uh, improve their skills on English language 
or uh, tr uh, refresh their uh, their language skills on another uh, another language, but is uh, like uh, life learning. Uh, Life, uh, life learning uh, because part young participants, some of them were first time without their parents uh, on a trip. So uh, they they learned uh, a, a different, uh, they learned more than it was the training uh, about. And I believe that they made uh, connections that will uh, last more than a, than a, this uh, trip to Czech, Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And merci, Dan. When you are like going around and you have the opportunity also work with like, people in other countries and the young people in Albania, maybe they want to participate, maybe not how you motivate them to get engaged in such activities or are they, everyone want to go somewhere? And... Yeah. Uh, in Albania, uh, most of the people now are in poor especially those who are in universities, but even those in high schools. We have uh, years working with high schools, in, especially in the uh, area of Tirana, but as more than uh, the half of Albanians live in Tirana, <laughs> you, you reach a, a big number of young people. And uh, now the opportunities is easier, even with uh, social media to share, with each other, with schools and with everyone else, it's uh, easier to find people that would want to participate because as Slavika said, it's a very uh, good opportunity to, to, to meet uh, new people from other countries, new cultures and everything else. As, as uh, with uh, projects, you, you meet uh, people with different point of views, different ideas and uh, you are more open-minded mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I think, Daria, what you said, we can relate also to the folk school because you say that like, you have a tradition of folk dancing, but there can come person which is rocker. In the, let's say, human library, you had a vegetarian and person which eats meat. But when we come, for example, to the culture, like uh, what I'm now experiencing sometimes in Czech Republic, because we also deal with now high inflation, many issues, and we did a human library, like part of like community, even in Pshero, where it was like part of culture. Some people now are saying, but culture, we can live without culture. You know, now there are more important issues to solve in the society. And But I don't agree with it because I think that culture is very essential. Like for broadening the perspective, bringing people together and breaking like their perception. Do you experience something similar in Poland that people are maybe now, because there are issues or maybe in Poland is very different, are like, uh, like, you know how to say, a bit more critical to the culture, like in the way that they think that it's the first thing which can be cut it out from our lives? I guess Polish people are very into culture and some uh, like traditional culture, culture because we have uh, the folk dancers in the Krakow or singers, but at Folkowisko, we also try to uh, engage people to each other um, by knowing the culture, not only from the Poland, but also uh, especially from the Ukraine, from Belarus, from Jew Jewish culture. We, we, we need, we, we try to um, get into uh, these cultures to people, especially now when there is a war uh, in uh, Ukraine and Fokovisko is very into the humanitarian uh, help. And so we are inviting Ukraine's uh, bands or um, Belarus uh, dissidents to, to talk to the people. And uh, yeah, I guess we try to, to, to show not only Polish culture to the people from the Folkowisko. Mm -hmm. Because even though we are uh, here working on different topics or different um, issues in like, our communities, do you think there is something we have in common or is there is something that we can war, war no, all? <laughs> Sorry, work on. Mm, that may be a question for everyone. Do you think that there is something like what connects Poland, Czech Republic, Albania, Serbia, Macedonia, 
I would. Uh, hmm? What do you uh, think? You, it, it's open now to everyone, also to Vladan, you can start. But no, you ask me. Uh, I know, I, I always feel that countries have something similar, I know, through history. Uh, I I like, uh, I want to say, I know, uh, I we are Slavs mostly, but, doesn't, but the religion here is doesn't matter because I live uh, really near to camp. Immigration camp is 50 meters near to me. I hang out sometimes with, with uh, people from Afghanistan, uh, India, and uh, Pakistan and, and that uh, our our local president uh, have benefit of that, of course. But that doesn't matter. I support every every religion and uh, all people from this world. Uh, of, uh, I've never been outside of Balkans in my life. I, I uh, for example, you're from Czech Republic. I like ice hockey. I was a writer on some sites for ice hockey, ice hockey prospects. That's my favorite sport. Uh, uh, I know, I see people um, here have, uh, of course, they criticize their com uh, community, society. Uh, if I'm talking about society here, I must, uh, we must uh, have conversation about politics all the time, you know, because everything is connected to politicians here. You know, when one, one person uh, uh, ruling in one place, uh, I know you, you, you don't have rights for nothing. Yeah, uh, 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 Bolivia municipality is something like North Korea, you know. <laughs> Believe me or not, we are middle of Balkan, but <laughs> we are like North Korea. People don't have any rights to to protest or, or uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, sorry, my English is uh, not perfect. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I when I heard her these people, I I'm glad to be here to listen. We have uh, some similar problems, of course, in our community. And uh, uh, but uh, but uh, I know I I want to stay the south and East Serbia. Uh, I want to uh, talking again. I will be back about that. Uh, people uh, uh, will be disappearing in a couple next years. Believe me, uh, uh, Serbian politicians don't care. Uh, Serbia turned back to us, and also we are near border. Bulgaria turned back to us, you know, because in Iman municipality, 70% of people are Bulgarian nationality. Uh, we are because of that, we are unique uh, case, maybe. But I never talk about uh, that because for me, it doesn't matter who is uh, what, you know. Uh, I hope we will find a way to stop this. Uh, uh, this evil, what they do to us, you know. Uh, we don't have human liberty, of course, here. Uh, I, before a couple, uh, couple years before, I organized some concerts in my uh, place, uh, some rock and heavy metal bands coming here. But uh, our local president uh, uh, trying everything to close that, to stop that, you know, because every person of media, when come in my place, uh, he go out and stop them uh, and uh, don't want to uh, we show the truth about our, our, us, about our co community here, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Thank we you are, very much. We, I will now a little bit cut you because like, uh, it's just that because we have uh, more guests. So, yeah. but you are like mentioning like that yeah, when you say this politicization, when I was like traveling in the Balkans, Czech Republic, I really feel that yeah, in the Balkans it's much more like that everything is politicized. doesn't matter about yeah. which topic yeah. you speak. And Gordana maybe has something to add regarding yeah. this cooperation or common issues because Gordana and after maybe also Jeanne, Slavet, Samer, Sida, maybe you so, feel because you already a little bit try to work internationally. So, so just uh, shortly, mm -hmm. what I can see and I, I so like from his very example, from Vladan's very example, uh, example of one very small uh, community that is far away from the main roads and the main cities where corruption is much more visible and people can feel it on their on their really backs. So I think this is one of our common problems and it is also uh, showing up in the in uh, in European Union pretty much also due to this war that we are living in uh, or close by. So corruption would be one of uh, one of the problems and then what we need is uh, solidarity among the citizens that can help us fight corruption 
or at all levels. And what is happening in Bosilegrad is this, like first people are coming up like, and then other pe people are, are supporting them. It is starting on social networks, but then slightly it will move into a real life. So these are, these, these are two things that I can say. I, uh, mm -hmm. So I guess we have to fight uh, fight together against corruption and other, other things that are related to the politics. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this. Janelle, what about you? How do you see, uh, like, when we speak about, like, yeah, for example, this project is created with the support of the Vishikat Fund. But personally, when I was thinking now about Vishikat countries, I think that, for example, we have very limited even cooperation with Czech Republic and Hungary. I was just like now remembering that you are maybe the one of the few organization or person which I even know from Hungary, which would be somehow geographic even maybe closer. And after like, I was like thinking that sometimes it's so hard to think about issues which would work like from Hungary or from Poland, Albania, but the corruption, I see a little like one. Do you have maybe some thoughts about like this cooperation, the common needs which we have or interest, which we could like use to build something new? Um, I think there could be a lot of issues, um, a lot of things to to address, but uh, but more general things. Not corruption, surely it's one of them. But if you think about cooperation, uh, I mostly think about education. Firstly, mm -hmm. we can we can surely, I mean, not just we as persons, but organizations from Hungary, from Czech Republic, and from all of the countries joining this group would um, would join for for education operational projects for 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 young people for on on for example just the top of my head you can you can you can educate people on on um digital literacy as we mentioned on um, on entrepreneurship social entrepreneurship self self expression all this stuff um again some of them related to culture you can do what we are doing for example now is self expression through slam poetry this is one of the things connecting culture with with education. That's one of one of my projects I'm doing in the next couple of months. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of big and large scale issues that that um, that is let's say common in the region regions, um, like environmental issues or, or pollution or, or or corruption. But but I would I would start from 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 education. That's that's always my start viewpoint. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do agree with you because I just will continue with my thought. When I do a lot of international trainings and after work in Czech Republic, I really sometimes feel that even people from the Western Balkans, like young people, are much more self-expressive. They know what they want. Maybe they, they, want, they know that they don't want to stay, neither in Skopje or in Tirana, but they know about it. They can talk and they can express their opinion. So I really think that education in terms of young uh, people, anyone can express the opinion or how you say digital literacy, for example, that is now burning issue. I don't know if Vlada will agree with me in Czech Republic. We are really bombarding by different campaigns like regarding disinformation and all this. And I think for people, it's many times very hard to even orient themselves, you know, like what's going on. So definitely education uh, yeah. would be it can... uh, very important. But it can be also on youth participation and active citizenship. So we could later tackle the other issues. Mm -hmm. So it's not um, instead of what you mentioned, but besides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, good. Yeah, good point. Thank you uh, for it. Slavica. Uh, yes, I, I, will, uh, yeah, well, I, I will add uh, that at the beginning when we started, we started to, to, to speak about the challenges, how to engage the the young population uh, into the community and I will continue with the education. Now, uh, even they are not maybe all uh, digital liter uh, literacy and they are bombarded with a lot of information. Uh, they they have a, 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 the young people are having a lack of, of soft skills. Uh, even that if they are ex expressing themselves more in the Balkan, but uh, they are not satisfying and they are not finding the way how how to to get what they they want or to 
uh, to present on the on the right way. So maybe uh, COVID made it uh, made the situation worse. There before that there were all uh, in front of the screens. Maybe now are more, and uh, they are lacking uh, uh, some, especially younger generation, uh, some uh, basic communication skills and uh, and uh, empathy mm -hmm. so maybe that and on the other side there are older population who are feeling a little bit lost in in, in this uh, time of, of of so many information so maybe uh, that are I'm seeing that common issue that uh, not only the Visegrad fund uh, countries are having but larger that how to to engage uh, and uh, uh, take a little bit in front of the screen for the younger uh, youngers and how to to uh, to to uh, to to approach to the uh, all uh, elder generation that uh, even if they do not work or uh, 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 they have a lot of potential to give to the to the community so maybe something to to connect mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, yeah. yeah i think i said it's very nice maybe those that like uh, if we would talk about youth participation from the beginning that young person has the skills, the knowledge, and uh, like they know how to, let's say, express themselves. They know where to find information, but they also, for example, Vlada and Gordana say that when they try to approach the municipalities, I see that when I speak with the Czech young people, they even maybe don't know that we have a municipality. You know, that like they want to some change, like, but they even don't know, for example, that like there is a mayor, how you can approach the mayor. There is other I question if it will work. But you know that like I think this common knowledge what we can do like as citizens and be able to articulate ourselves, be able to find the channels and after also to connect with the other people in the community. So I would maybe see very nice this dot like with this youth participation from the beginning. Because also what I do believe and I checked some uh, clever research that shows that if the youngsters are start to be activated at the beginning, Mercida said that you were active from 18, I think that people will stay active somehow mm -hmm. like you will find your issue or you will continue to do something in your communities yeah like like my thought about also about caucasus and our countries is that we still have this legacy of the soviet times and i believe it's kind of yeah it's a thing which uh, which is uh, still present uh, among both adults and young people that that it's probably one of the one of the reasons why young people are not that active as we wish they would be and and yeah like why also like why maybe we are not that that, that open towards towards other mm -hmm. towards other people so so yeah like like, yeah, like when I was traveling also to Caucasus and to, to other countries which are present here, I've noticed, yeah, very similar things in the, in the mentality of people. So it... Like, what would be the best scenario for you? Like that all your community goes out and protest? Like how you want it, you know? What do, what do you think that uh, the minds are closed or... What do you, you, you are asking me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I ask you, yeah, Vladan. Yeah, let's um, close, let's the close the circle. So <laughs> I will now ask about you the best scenarios, like how you, uh, the best scenario. Uh, yeah, yeah. How, people, how you imagine that your community, uh, if everybody gets engaged, looks in <laughs> five, ten years. The people open their eyes and fight for their uh, air. I know. I want to say that because. Uh, uh, life is danger here. If, even if not, no one looks like no one pressure you, believe me, everything is pressure you here <laughs> on South and East Serbia. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I uh, so, some of those minds is uh, I don't see the the answer and uh, chance to close that because they behind back of that is uh, huge corporations, not just in Serbia, but also from uh, China. Canada, it's and uh, I I don't see there will be closed minds, but I hope they will stop to open other new one, you know, mm 
and I hope those minds will find the the way to uh, maybe to put some filters to that uh, uh, waste from that might don't go in our rivers and to pollute our water. That for me is the most important here. If there those uh, my, uh, the owners who don't mind find a way to stop stop that waste coming our rivers, I will be happy mm -hmm. with that. I know. So I really hope that we will achieve it. Gordana, what will be like your prediction for how, what you would like to see if we could like now say that five ten years we have and everybody gets in well there. the changes i want to see we can reach by getting politically engaged so mm -hmm. if all these activists and like fair people not corrupted people get politically engaged you know become a candidate and win then we can, you know, get clean waters and clean air and clean soil and maybe some really sustainable development. Mm -hmm. So future. I have now other tricky question. I can ask it because I know you more. When I will see you on the candidate list in in Vranje, in which soon, election? I guess. Soon. I guess soon. <laughs> okay, so I take it like a word, and I really hope that maybe in a few years, and I will do something. And I hope like Vladan as well, and Branko Mitov in Bosilegra. This is what I hope for. No, so definitely. And after I can invite you to some discussion when I will invite these young people to see how about this youth participation, maybe, and how engagement works. No, I do think that this is also important that people which do fight and they have some vision that they go engage and they take also the roles. Mm -hmm. Jeanette, what would be your prediction if you say that in five, ten years, everybody's community engaged, like where you would see maybe the biggest change? I I would love to, what I would love to see is mm -hmm. press organizing. Mm -hmm. Grassroot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so co basically community organizing when you have emerging leaders um, and it's a community leader, communi community led initiative and they have some small issue they solve it by themselves they go after it they meet they gather more people who are affected by the same issue it can be as simple as a light bulb needs to be changed um, on the street to serious more serious issues like i don't even want to give examples because i think you have uh, many in your head as well <laughs> um that would give that would give um um, more power to to some specific in some cases underrepresented under, underrepresented groups, um, and that would be something that uh, the professionals who work with youth cannot solve by themselves. Mm -hmm. Great, it's very nice vision. Slavica, what would be your vision? Uh, that everybody starts from from by uh, from his own yard uh, to to have uh, to be a little bit uh, more socially conscious and to to take care about the little things that are making bigger problem like with pollution everybody is throwing the garbage in the Balkans where never they. Uh, they they uh, they are doesn't matter if there is a can for garbage or something like that. If we are starting, uh, if we start to be a little bit uh, on personal level conscious, uh, maybe the, the the bigger problems would not be so big as they as mm -hmm. they are now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lukas. So, um, if everybody goes engage, yeah. Uh, how it will so, look like? What is your best prediction for your community of Poland? Uh, so, like, my wish would be that that people from different, uh, let's say, political views or from different uh, different areas starts to communicate with themselves, and you know, like they they understand that you know, like the other party have some needs, and you know, like there's a reason why they have such a belief and you know like somehow when we start talking we will understand that you know like basically we all have the same needs but we have some different strategies to uh, to accomplish to to met to meet these needs and um, that we are in interdependent so we are dependent on other people and by the cooperation we can we can grow we can flourish or or thrive mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much. Merci. Là. Yeah, I think in in 10 years, I hope to see more uh, young people involved, not just in politics, but in every area, because uh, they have the potential to change things. And especially in Albania, I really hope to see this thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for all your very nice thoughts. And like, I really hope that it will happen something because like all we are here, like you are very great example of community engagement. So I would like to like close this uh, discussion by really thank you of giving us like this one on one one half of your time. And I really wish that like it will go, let's say in this um, direction that we imagine. So thank you once more.